Four years later and Brazil were in West Germany in search of a fourth World Cup. But times had changed. Zagallo and Rivellino were both still there, but the magical team of 1970 was now a distant memory. The big problem in 74 was the fact that it just wasn't a good time for Brazil. A lot of players were injured or retiring. Rivellino was now back in his preferred central midfield role. With Pelé now retired, he carried the burden of being Brazil's star man. Yet the weight of the number 10 shirt seemed only to inspire him. Rivellino really helped the national team. In 1974, he had a really good tournament, and Brazil did well. Indeed, he dragged his country to the final stages of the tournament after a poor start. Two goals from that famous left foot against East Germany and then against Argentina ensured a weakened Brazil team had a chance of retaining their title. But there was only so much Rivellino could do now that his celebrated teammates of 70 were no longer alongside him. A player like Rivellino can't win every World Cup on his own. Even Maradona didn't win every World Cup he played in. There was a shift in the balance of footballing power. Holland were now the nation revolutionising the way the game was played. A 2-0 defeat against the Dutch marked the end of over a decade of Brazilian dominance. We have to respect what Holland did. In my opinion, they were favourites to win the title because of the modern football they played in that World Cup. They just had a whole different way of seeing the game. Back home in Sao Paulo, Rivellino's troubles continued. He'd failed to win a tournament with Corinthians in his nine years there, and the club were without a title in 20 years. Their notoriously impatient fans were growing restless. He had a serious problem because it wasn't just a club with fans in Sao Paulo, but in the whole of Brazil. You get Corinthians fans everywhere. And as he was the biggest star at the club, everyone expected him to deliver a title, and he didn't manage it. In 74, Corinthians faced Palmeiras in the Sao Paulo state final. Surely the trophyless years were at an end. But Palmeiras won 1 0, and Rivellino was held to blame. Rivellino never won a title with Corinthians, and the fans blamed him for that. But he wasn't guilty of that. The whole team was to blame. He wasn't the team. You don't win anything on your own. That's when I left Corinthians and went to Rio to play for Fluminense. Rivellino made that short journey from Sao Paulo to Rio in 1974. It was a major coup for Fluminense to have signed one of the untouchables of 1970, and his impact was felt by his new teammates. I followed Rivellino in the 70 World Cup. I remember watching that team become world champions. Rivellino, just like every player who played in that 70 team, was a legend. To then play alongside him was just a dream. Rivellino also found himself reunited with another of that 1970 side. Veteran goalkeeper Felix was captain of the Rio club. I made a speech to my teammates saying that we would be welcoming a world champion with open arms. He'd never won a regional tournament. So I told them we would have to do all we could to help him win the Rio Championship. Fluminense are traditionally seen as the club of Rio's elite. Without great resources or popular support, they enjoyed only limited success. Rivellino brought the fans back to Fluminense that year. Just to give you an idea, his debut was on the Saturday of Carnival. It was a sacred date for all Brazilians, especially those from Rio. But the president of Fluminense was brave enough to present Rivellino to the fans on that Saturday of Carnival, and the Maracanã filled up. For Saturday during Carnival, it was impossible to have a crowd that big. It was special. It was particularly special for Rivellino too. Fluminense's opponents that day were the club who'd spurned him, Corinthians. And his response to his critics was a stunning hat-trick.
I was lucky enough to score three goals, and people said I was trying to show Corinthians what they were missing. But I played the same for Fluminense. My style of football and my ability never changed. In Rio, they call Rivellino's Fluminense the Machina, the machine. The Machina was a sensational team, as it was made up of great players. In every position, there was someone who was playing for Brazil or someone who had played for Brazil in the past. It was very easy playing in a team like that. And I think it was a very easy team to coach because we played as if we were playing to music. We were practically walking when we knocked the ball around. Oh, those two years in Rio were fantastic. We won virtually everything. Fluminense won back-to-back -back state titles in 1975 and 76. Rivellino had finally found the winning touch at club level. He showed how good he was as he went to Fluminense and won all the titles he could. Famous for his breathtaking skill, Rivellino also had time to perfect one trick of his own, the elastico or flip-flap. I learned the move from a player called Sergio Ashigo, who played with me in the Corinthians youth team in 64. He invented that trick. I saw him do it once and I said, hey, Japanese, what's that trick? He said, it's easy, River, I'll teach you it. And he says now that he invented it, but I perfected it. I have to say that he was better than me at that. That was something he created. He'd always talk about it when he trained with us. It was a trait that only Rivellino could do. Everyone started doing it after him, but Rivellino did it perfectly. It was like the ball was glued to his foot. He'd do this and then the ball would come back and he'd run off with it. Really impressive. Pelé couldn't do that trick. He wasn't skillful enough. <laughs> Having starred so successfully at Fluminense, Rivellino hoped for one last shot at international glory. In 1978, he travelled to Argentina as Brazil's most experienced player, yet he was no longer the explosive force of 1970. 1978 was a World Cup that Rivellino perhaps shouldn't have even played in. But he was called up, he's a professional guy, and so he went. But it wasn't a World Cup that saw Rivellino at his best. He'd picked up an injury on his left foot only weeks before the tournament began. It was clear that Rivellino would have little impact in Argentina. Even though he wasn't playing, he still gave everyone advice, he helped out, he talked a lot. He was always ready to help out both the national team and each player individually. It was a shame as it was my last World Cup. I prepared myself well, but unfortunately picked up an injury and played only a few games. That was a World Cup I don't like to remember. Brazil struggled without his leadership, yet he still helped his country to third place. After 92 games and 26 goals, Rivellino would never again wear the yellow shirt of Brazil. A final stint playing in Saudi Arabia was followed by his retirement. Rivellino couldn't leave the game behind, however. He returned to Sao Paulo and opened his own sports centre. It's tough to retire and stop doing what you love. I love playing football. If I could, I'd still be playing. But obviously I can't do that anymore. Over in Saudi Arabia, I started to realise that the end was coming. And I'd have to stop playing and start a whole new life. His biggest influence has perhaps been the impact he made on a new generation of footballing stars. With his obvious ability and eye for invention, he struck a chord with the younger players, wanting to bring back a level of artistry to the game. I'd always watch a lot of videos of him. I'd imagine myself being Rivellino. And then I wanted to be left-footed too, like Rivellino. He was and still is one of my biggest heroes. 
Diego Maradona cites him as his greatest inspiration when he was growing up. The close control, feints and magical left foot were all too reminiscent of Rivellino in his prime. As he was also left-footed and very skillful, I saw myself in him. Sometimes it felt like something I'd just done, but in fact it was Maradona. There were certain similarities in certain situations, but it's satisfying for me that he admired my football and liked me. Life has come full circle for Rivellino. Back in his childhood neighbourhood, he's keeping the flame burning for the next generation of talent. With buildings taking the place of the open streets in which he learned his trade, he's giving young players a chance to flourish in Sao Paulo's concrete jungle. Forty years on from that triumph in Mexico, Roberto Rivellino's star is still shining brightly. They've got rid of all the open spaces where kids used to play football. There's nowhere left. It's just buildings. At least here I've got a space for kids to play and learn a bit. And it's fun. Football is in my blood, and it's nice to see the kids messing around on the pitch during the classes. I like that. I like that a lot.